Hello my brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world again we're here again to join uh, hands hearts uh, and minds in the spirit and worship the Lord and pray again and, and maybe harmonize ourselves and um, sing along the hymns that the Lord puts in our hearts together in harmony I hope you're having a good day and good time wherever you are uh, here where we are in England and in this part of the world uh, it is 18 degrees as far as the temperature outside uh, that is Celsius by the way it's about 64 degrees Fahrenheit uh, so it's not um, bad it's not hot it's not cold so it's, it's it's good it is cloudy though and it rained early on however um, as we were watching uh, one of these Christian channels that uh, sometimes uh, we watch depending on who is talking and and while we were having our dinner I suddenly noticed at the bottom of the screen as the preacher was preaching at the bottom of the screen it said in big letters something like I can't, I can't quote exactly but um, it was something like seek medical advice uh, if you need uh, medical treatment uh, or have serious serious illness something like that as soon as I read that I just thought this sounds suspicious you know uh, I don't care about the preacher I don't care who does that you know if, if you do that if they've done it on their own accord if they've done it on their own discretion I wouldn't agree with them however personally I wouldn't put that there um, but I think as I talked to my wife we think um, they're probably being told or somebody is probably tried to sue them you know you can't heal people it, it, it truly truly disturbed me to my bones and and I'm really really angry really steaming as, as I see and hear things like that I just think how much more do they want to push their agenda and how much more we as the body of Christ uh, are going to show flexibility and, and be just like liquid and just take the form of anything that they give us and not have any backbones to stand against them how much and how far do we want to tolerate that this is not right you know I have a very strong uh, point of view as far as when it comes to he healing uh, you know I've had experiences of my own I pray for people they've been healed I've seen them healed I've, I've had numerous occasions they've been healed and I've had my own experience of my own personal in my own personal body uh, receiving healing uh, so I, I cannot deny that I cannot wash it down I cannot reject it uh, and, and I'm totally for healing divine healing uh, and I believe it can take effect sometimes immediately and sometimes it takes a while before it shows its results um, before it, it manifests in your body or in your loved ones bodies you know to be healed um, however it does happen and it will happen 
is a recurring phenomenon that happens all around the world throughout various nations and societies in the world and it's never stopped and it will never stop healing is part of our mission as as the body of Christ so we cannot put that aside I know some churches some sects or if, if you like sects if you like denominations I would call them sects some denominations don't even believe in healings anymore they just think well healings now we have developed medicine and doctors now it's in the hands of doctors and medical industry and so they're doing basically God's bidding on earth and you know whatever however they might put it you know they might say it in a different way uh, than the way I just said it but that's basically what they mean and they pray and my argument with them is always this that why do you even pray when you get sick or when you need healing why do you pray why do you pray when um, you're facing a situation your child needs healing and doctors have no answer doctors have no remedy which is a typical thing that they have anyway always um, you know they always say there is no remedy for this there is no remedy for that in fact there is no remedy for anything really as far as the medical industry is concerned there's no remedy for anything and and we have to wash everything down you know we have our own um, if you go on truly majestic because we've got everything basically there uh, you'll see a section that we have uh, for people who are suffering psoriasis and uh, eczema and and that's something that we developed ourselves and, and that's part of our job part of what we do and and that's mainly my wife's um, profession and uh, I've had my own input into it uh, however it's um, her domain and her forte uh, because she's a herbalist and so she knows all about herbs and so when we were trying to build that website um, we had to get clued up on all these red tapes and all these red lines that we had to um, be careful not to cross any of these red lines uh, for example you can say this cures you and this even you know heals you we can't say any of that and um, it's forbidden these are forbidden words uh, how much uh, restrictions they put on us as, as human beings well, we can't say things like that um, so there's a lot to say and, and I'm not going to stretch this video too far uh, because I know people are working and they've got their um, plans around the day uh, they've they're sat there only for a short while just to listen to me and probably uh, be encouraged and pray however I want to give you a little bit of a story and um, it's a testimony uh, of my own it's one of the testimonies of my own I, I have hundreds of them my life is full of testimonies uh, but again uh, we're just going to now uh, focus on one and, and tell you one uh, little story that affected me and, and to this day um, I'm reaping the benefits of it basically uh, about uh, 20 years ago well that's, that's a long long time ago that's that's as that's as old as I, I want to pretend to be <laughs> that's 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 what pretty too many years ago that's uh, you know just thinking about it that's, uh, anyway 20 years ago um, then I was single and I was out shopping in a store 
suddenly I uh, felt a tremendous pain on my uh, left side of my back I, I didn't know what it was it was a sharp pain and it was from inside and uh, to be honest I, I'd never had any pain and you know uh, I was quite young and didn't really feel and like I'm like there was any emergency so uh, I kept tolerating it basically bearing the pain and and went through shopping and I got to the checkout and I was uh, waiting there for the checkout to clear with the customer there was a customer there and this customer was talking to the woman at the checkout just chit-chatting and and I was thinking just get out woman just get out and and you know I, I need to get out of here I was in tremendous pain and and the pain was increasing by the second and anyway uh, cut the long story short I managed to go through the checkout pay the bill got out as I got out and walked I still had a couple of blocks uh, to, to walk to get to where I lived then uh, but I, I, I just suddenly felt like I can't even walk I sat down and, and I was thinking to myself what on earth is this because this is unheard of and I've never ever felt anything like this so I dragged myself to home and um, at the time I was living uh, with a very close friend of mine who was uh, a lot older than me and he was I, I used to consider him as my uh, adopted father he, he was looking after me and he was taking care of me in, in many ways uh, he was a Christian himself uh, he was a Christadelphian Christian however uh, we had a lot of uh, disagreements in many ways as far as the, our doctrines were concerned but that's besides the point uh, when I got home uh, I said to him I, I have a, a really bad pain on my back he said just go lay down maybe it's, it's your stomach um, or it's your back I said well it's not my back it's not my muscles or anything it's inside he said maybe you've had something bad um, food hasn't settled the you or whatever go rest upstairs and just lay down and see how, how it goes I went there laid down uh, it was getting worse and worse I couldn't I was tossing and turning I couldn't even lay down I shouted Bob's and he, that was his name uh, he came up I said look I can't you have to call an ambulance we have to take me to the hospital and um, he put me in his car and drove to the hospital we went to the hospital at the emergencies and he had me waiting there in pain for exactly five hours five hours I was waiting in the any and um, for five hours to be admitted uh, and, and um, I was dying and as I was feeling like I was dying uh, I had no idea what he was I was looking up as I was laid on a stretcher next to a window and I was looking up to the sky and I was thinking God I'm coming but why what did I achieve in my life I hadn't even done anything you know I was thinking what was the purpose of my life then I came to this life for this for no reason for no purpose and I'm just going you're taking me back I haven't achieved anything and I, I meant it I was serious and I was ready to go up and I was thinking I'm going up I'm dying and, and I, as I was calling the doctors who weren't coming and some nurses were passing by and they wouldn't even care they, they just basically looked at me and they said oh the doctor is coming no you're not dying 
and I'm thinking how do you know you know anyway uh, it was a painful very very bad day <laughs> and again to cut the long story short uh, they admitted me they got me to the ward and they gave me some you know very strong painkillers they gave me volumes and, and I just fell asleep the next morning they said we have to scan you we have to test you we have to take you know urine samples and this and that uh, we think is kidney stone so at least I knew what it was before that I had no idea just before they did anything um, some of my friends from the church I used to go came the pastor of the church came and they prayed for me I happened to be in a ward that uh, a woman who was visiting her patient she was also a Christian and she came and prayed for me and I prayed for her um, and this this is the first day after the um, night I just slept there and they hadn't given me any kind of medication and people came prayed for me and they did the scan they did the tests and uh, in the meantime they were monitoring my urine and everything to see if I'm passing out any grits or stones or anything I believed that the prayers uh, would just heal me completely especially uh, particular person it was my pastor at the time and he prayed for me and I believed in his prayers although there were other people prayed for me as well but uh, I strongly believed that his prayer would uh, clear me and and that's exactly what happened so they tested they scanned they monitored the urine and everything they couldn't find the thing and they said it was a kidney stone and um, we believe it's been passed but I asked have you seen it in my urine the grits or anything you know and they said no so they didn't have any answers as to how it's just gone but I knew how but I was there for 11 days and they were monitoring me and while I was there I read through the book of Matthew the way I love to read because the way I read I like to read one at least one verse or one chapter at a time and analyze it to bits question and question and question and I had listed all my questions to ask my pastor the next time he came for for a visit and, and other people and uh, it daunted on me at the time that uh, I was praying before all this happened that God would give me some time to pr to pray and read my Bible the way I wanted to read you know that's important because the way I wanted to read is not just reading the Bible I wanted to read it study it analyze it and 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 find out the answers to all the questions I had uh, and I had postponed this over and over and I kept saying to myself you know next week next week next week and, and, and asking God to give me time because I was busy working and all that then it daunted on me that God gave me time then, it, then suddenly remembered the Psalm 23 the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures he makes me lie down in green pastures and that that's that's exactly what he did he made me lie down in green pastures and I was lucky because uh, the nurses there they were really good and I know they're not always good uh, and, and, and that was just my uh, God-given time and people that were that were there at the time 
to 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 do their to do their job really to do their job and to do what God had appointed them to do but they didn't know that uh, but I knew that and I still know that um, he makes me lie down in green pastures he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul you know uh, and I knew this was happening to me sometimes you're asking for something you're praying for something and it's not happening but God will make you lay down to do what he wants you to do or he wants to do for you sometimes that's just the way it is you know he restores my soul it says he restores my soul John also says in 3rd John chapter 1 verse 2 it says uh, beloved I pray that in every way you may prosper in every way you may prosper every way every way you think of you may prosper and enjoy good health good health as your soul also prospers as your soul also prospers so while I was there not only I enjoyed good health I became healthy but my soul prospered because I learned so much about this book of Matthew that I wanted to read and I wanted to study it the way I wanted to study I wanted to take it into bits and analyze it and ask as many questions as I, I wanted to ask and answer, get my answers to all those questions and that was the time God gave me and I used that and you know guess what if, if I didn't use that God would probably lay me down even further and it would make me lie down beside still water even longer or make things worse but that was an answer to my prayers but I didn't expect it to be, to be that way you know you, you just don't expect it to be that way sometimes the answers God gives you is not exactly the same as what you want but however it is God's response to your prayers my soul prospered I learned so much about the Word of God then and and also I got to know a few other people there while I was there and and, and found out something else I was laid there on a bed that was next to somebody else who guess what he, he was a factory owner it was the manager and factory owner of a small factory where I had actually applied for a job and he rejected to give me that job as an engineer and that was the best opportunity and I was always asking myself you know uh, always wondering why he didn't give me that job because I was fully qualified and and he didn't give me that job and that job actually I, I was thinking I'm actually bringing myself down to take this job because I just need it at the moment I won't stay here it's only because I just need a job at the moment and um, but I'm trying to humble myself and you're rejecting me you know it was like an offense to me so he happened to be there next to me on the next bed and I saw him and I said hey and he said yeah hey, after you know I was healthy enough to talk to him and uh, and I said to him you know I have, a, I have a question from you why did you reject me he said you know what you, you were overqualified for, for the job and and when he said that I was still thinking you know come on I needed the job but looking back now um, I think that was a great blessing and he was a good man doing that because if he didn't do that my path of life would have been totally different would have taken a different course and I would have not been uh, where I am today 
I would have not done the things that I've done since then and the places that I've worked at. I wouldn't have done any of them. Uh, he did me a he, he, he did me a favor by not giving me that job and I was overqualified for that, for that position. So it was a blessing to my soul, to my spirit and to my flesh. The Lord makes you lie down in green pastures. He will bless your soul. Now, back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video. It is really disturbing to think that the powers have such agendas that will push their, their prying and uh, they have been successful in many ways uh, to push um, their agenda forward and, and limit churches. Uh, they have limited uh, what we can say. They have limited us, restricted us as far as what we can say, what we can do. And it's sad, you know, when when it is in the secular world and they say, okay, don't write in your, let's for instance say, on our uh, psoriasis uh, slash eczema healing website, don't write healing and don't write curing, just say this may treat or something like that, have to wa water it down. We just think, okay, we'll go by that uh, and we'll find our own ways. But when it comes to the Word of God, when it comes to the body of Christ, when it comes to the church, um, I don't think they'll stop there. They're not going to stop there. They want to do away with the church. Altogether. Remember, if you are in England and watching me, I don't know about other countries, but I know this. In this country, as soon as there was the first lockdown, the first thing they did, they closed down the churches. Then it was other businesses and sectors. Church is the thorn in their flesh. They don't like it. As weak as it may be, they don't like it. And they have their people in it. They have infiltrated it all over the world. They are even trying to change the word of God. They are even trying to make it illegal. And they have made it illegal in schools and I know in, in many states in America it has been illegal. Um, but they will make it illegal to even buy or read. This is what they want to do. But it's funny that they themselves, as demonic and satanic that they may be, and they are, they have read the Bible and they know it, and they're using the principles of the Bible for their own evil agendas. It's sickening, but it's happening. And if you and I don't stand our ground, then we're not standing on anything. You have to stand your ground. You have to stand your ground. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't be a sweet, as I call, candy Christian, just to be nice to people and try to please everybody. You need to please God. You need to align with the Word of God. Your actions, your words need to align with the Word of God. If you say, go and see a doctor, and I pray for you, you know, I think we have an issue here. We have a conflict. I have nothing against doctors or nurses. I, as I just explained, uh, have experienced myself how nurses looked after me while I was there but then again that was just a miracle 
uh, they didn't do anything to, to get me better apart from giving me that painkiller a strong painkiller of course but um, they didn't actually cure me they didn't do anything to destroy the kidney stone or eliminate it or do whatever to you know destroy it it was the prayers that destroyed it it was destroyed so much that they couldn't even see the grits because there wasn't any it was miraculously divinely destroyed it completely disappeared and never since I've had any kidney issues that's only one testimony of hundreds if not thousands of my own personal uh, testimonies that I can give you but I want you to know that there is a worldwide conspiracy against us and if you don't believe that I want to read that passage of scripture again for you from Psalm 2 which reads why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain the kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together against the Lord so the kings of the earth take their places take their stand and gather together against the Lord if they're against the Lord have no doubt about it make no mistake they're against you because you are in the Lord you believe that I believe that uh, if we are in the Lord they're against us because we form the body of Christ if they're against Christ they're against us but this is not this is only one verse there is more and um, that testifies the fact that there is a conspiracy the kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers gather together so there is a conspiracy against the Lord and against his anointed one that's Jesus let us break their chains their chains you understand and cast away their cords cast away their cords what is the chain that's holding us all together this Bible the Word of God they want to destroy that and guess what the one enthroned in heaven laughs the Lord he taunts them then he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his fury I have installed my king on Zion upon my holy mountain I will proclaim the decree spoken to me by the Lord you are my son today I have become your father ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance and ends of the earth your possession you will break them with an iron scepter we are in Christ Christ will break him with an iron scepter and we will break him with an iron scepter the way we do it we do it first by putting the full armor of God on so we are protected against all the flaming arrows of Satan and we pray this is a spiritual battle yes we see the manifestation of them spiritual mm, battles on earth in the physical realm but we have to tackle it from the root which is in the heavenly realms now Psalm 58 uh, also testifies to what I'm saying if you still believe that the governments the authorities are there to look after you and your interests but read this one then do you indeed 
speak justly or, or rulers do you judge uprightly O sons of men this is talking to the rulers do you indeed speak justly do you judge uprightly O sons of men no in your hearts you devise injustice with your hands you mete out violence on the earth the wicked are estranged from the womb the liars go astray from birth their venom is like the venom of a snake like a cobra that shuts its ears refusing to hear the tune of the charmer who skillfully weaves his spell oh god shatter their teeth now this is what you have to pray this is the line of prayers now you can pray in your own words but this is the kind of line of prayers that we have to pray against them against them against those evil rulers against our enemy who wants to destroy our chains our court we have to pray also we have to fight against them we have to stand our um, ground and we have to fight this battle in the spiritual realm the battle is the Lord's but we have parts to play we can't just say well the battle is the Lord's I'm just gonna carry on my life and bow to the desires and demands of the evil rulers and just bend over backward and do whatever they want me to do no we don't do that now see how David is praying oh God shatter their teeth in their mouths oh Lord tear out the fangs of the lions may they vanish like water that runs off when they draw the bow may the arrows be blunted no weapon formed against you shall prosper that's similar no weapon formed against us shall prosper here you go David is saying may they vanish like water that runs off when they draw the bow when the arrows may the arrows be blunted like a slug that dissolves in its slime like a woman's stillborn child may they never see the sun you have to pray for your evil rulers in your state in your country that they may never see the sun before your pots can feel the burning thorns whether green or dry he will sweep them away God will sweep them away the righteous will rejoice we will rejoice when they see they are avenged they will wash their feet in the blood of the wicked then men will say then men will say there is surely a reward for the righteous there is surely a God who judges the earth I want to close this session with the next um, psalm which is a prayer again the continuation of this prayer for all of you and I would like you to continue in prayer as we are in a battle Heavenly Father deliver me from my enemies oh my God protect me from those who rise against me deliver me from workers of iniquity I'm reading from Psalm 59 you might have your own translation read that again and pray O Lord 
Uh, you deliver me from my enemies, O oh my God. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me from workers of iniquity and save me from men of bloodshed. See how they lie in wait for me. Fierce men conspire against me for no transgression or sin of my own, O Lord, for no fault of my own. They move swiftly to attack me. Arise to help me and take notice, O Lord, God of hosts, the God of Israel. Rouse yourself to punish all the nations. Show no mercy to the wicked traitors. They return in the evening, snarling like dogs and prowling around the city. See what they spew from their mouths, sharp words from their lips, for who can hear us? But you, O oh Lord, laugh at them. You scoff at all the nations. I will keep watch for you, O oh my strength, because you, O oh God, are my fortress. My God of loving devotion will come to meet me. God will let me stare down my foes. Do not kill them, or my people will forget scatter them by your power and bring them down O Lord our shield by the sins of their mouths and the words of their lips let them be trapped in their pride in the curses and lies they utter consume them in wrath consume them till they are no more so it may be known to the ends of the earth that God rules over Jacob amen and you, you hear that they're conspiring against us they're conspiring against the Lord they're conspiring against you they're conspiring against me they're conspiring against everything that has to do with the Lord and and the way you pray you, you see this is the same lines of prayer I have been praying almost in all my um, sessions that has to do with the, the authorities. And the only way is, first of all, you put on the armor of God. You be spiritually grounded in the word of God, that is. And also pray that they may be scattered. They may be brought down by their own lies. You be put to shame. Be exposed although they know any they know no shame they don't know that they have no shame but we need to pray that they may, may be exposed let them see what it says here uh, let them be trapped in their pride in the curses and the lies they utter that is exposure consume them in wrath consume them till they are no more so it may be known to the ends of the earth that God rules over Jacob. May God bless you and have mercy on you and your entire family and prosper you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'll see you again with another live session. Till then, goodbye.